what you just saw was the opening item of an Odissi dance recital called the Mangalacharan. It begins with an offering of flowers and salutations to Mother Earth called the Bhumi Pranam, followed by a shloka invoking the blessings of Lord Ganesha called the Ishtadeva Vandana. It concludes with the Trikhandi Pranam, which is a rhythmic passage in which God, the Guru, and the Rasika Sabha or the audience is greeted. There is a definite pattern to this item and the various passages are governed by certain norms. These norms have to be followed by a dancer in order to be called classical. Odissi is one of the classical dance forms of India and it has its origins in Orissa in the southeastern shores of India. All the classical dance forms recognize the Nati Shastra, a treatise written between the 2nd century BC and the 2nd century AD as their source. It is believed to have been written by a sage called Bharata and in it he mentions regional varieties. One of these called the Odramagadhi can be taken to be the precursor of the present day Odissi. Archaeological evidence dates Odissi back to the 2nd century BC. The Jain caves of Udaigiri and Khandagiri near Bhubaneshwar have a rock inscription on the ceiling of the Hati Gumpa in which the king Kharavela proclaims himself to be a patron of the arts. It is here in one of the caves called the Rani Gumpa that the earliest evidence of a dancer in performance along with her musicians is seen. After a barren period in terms of historical evidence, we come across numerous representations of dance figures in Shaiva temples of Bhubaneswar built between the 7th and the 11th century. Temples like the Parashurameshwara, Brahmeshwara, Mukteshwara, Raja Rani, and the Lingaraj abound in dance sculptures. In the Parashurameshwara temple of 7th century, we find grills with panels of dancers and musicians, a dancer in an acrobatic pose, and a rare representation of the Chauka, one of the two main stances of Odyssey. Only a flourishing tradition of dance could have inspired the sculptor to produce such works of art as these found in these temples. Various religious waves swept Orissa between the 2nd century BC till about the 11th century AD. These were Jainism, Buddhism, Tantrism and Shaivism. All these found a synthesis in a unique philosophy in the faith of Lord Jagannath when Vaishnavism took roots in Orissa. The temple of Lord Jagannath built in Puri by Chodaganga Deva has been the chief custodian of the Odissi dance form over the centuries. The culmination of the temple building activity is seen in the magnificent sun temple at Konark, which was constructed around 1250 AD by the King Narasimha I of the Ganga dynasty. A monument to time, it is built in the form of a chariot of the sun god pulled by seven horses. The plinth of the Natamandapa is a virtual dictionary of dance movements frozen in stone. They continue to inspire Odissi dancers even today. Apart from the architectural and sculptural evidence, textual evidence in the form of palm leaf manuscripts is also found which is dated between the 16th and the 19th centuries. It speaks of a rich tradition of dance, music and painting in Odisha.
some of the illustrated manuscripts had been very useful in restructuring of Orissi at the time of its revival. Dance in Orissa was considered to be an indispensable part of the daily temple rituals. These dances were performed by special girls called the Devadasis or Maharis. They were married to the deity in a special ceremony and they represented the earthly counterparts of the mythical figures in the heavens called the Apsaras and they were highly respected in the society. Around the 16th century, when the Maharis came to be employed in the royal courts, started the degeneration of the dance forms. Around this time, a class of boys called the Gotipurs were trained in this art form and they continued to dance outside the temple for the public entertainment. They were maintained by the Zamidars and the kings. It is only due to these Gotipurs that the tradition has been kept alive to present day. Most of the present day Orissi gurus belong to this tradition. By the beginning of this century, dance had become almost extinct in Orissa. It was only after the independence in the 50s when the revival started. After painstaking research into the palm leaf manuscripts, the sculptural evidence and the living dance traditions. Now it enjoys tremendous popularity all over the world. Following the tenets laid down by the Natya Shastra, Orissi can be divided into two distinct categories of Mritta and Nritya. Nritta deals with aesthetic arrangement of abstract movements of the body governed by certain laws, while Nritya employs facial expressions, body positions and hand gestures in order to convey a feeling. Nritta has no lyrical content, while Nritya has a text that is sung by a vocalist and interpreted by the dancer. The laws of movement in Orissi are built around the two basic postures of the choke and the tribhanga. The choke is a squarish position in which the two halves of the body are equally balanced. This is a very masculine position and represents the stance of Lord Jagannath also. The tribhanga is on the other hand a very feminine position where there are three bends of the body. The first bend comes at the knees, second at the torso and the third at the neck. Apart from the body positions, there are foot positions where the flat toe or heel contacts are used in varying combinations. There are certain foot positions where one of the foot is not in contact with the ground. Then there are certain walks or jumps. Pirouettes. Or stances inspired by sculpture. That are incorporated in the Nritta technique. The leg movements in Odyssey often follow spiral patterns. The trace curves either in space or on the ground. The arm movements are also curvaceous. They follow curves or circles. The hastas used in the nritta technique, nritta aspect, are used only for decorative purposes. The torso movement forms an important part of Orissi movement. 
the upper half moving and the lower half remaining static is what requires tremendous control. This is a very special feature of Odyssey. The eyes, neck and the head movements are also governed by certain rules and it's only when rules are applied systematically to each part of the body that a certain style emerges and is called classical. The training is in Odyssey begins with exercises in the two basic body positions of the Chauka and the Tribhanga. Bindu Juneja, one of my students, will demonstrate it for you. Exercises in the Tribhanga position. One, ta, e ti na kurtegate, te, ta, e ti na kurtegate, te, ta, e ti na kurtegate, te, de, de, na ti na kurtegina kit, ta, e ti na kurtegate, te, ta, e ti na kurtegate, te, ta. are put together to make bigger units an arasa ta kundari ta che nam tri mi i ta ta dri i ta dri mi i ta kad tak dhe kad tak dhe ta adri i ta dri mi ke ta Tin tin a kurta gina, tin tin a kurta gina, karda taka te, karda taka te, ta kurta gde ta. And finally, these units combine to make an ritta item.
After the very basic exposition of Nritta in Vattu comes the flowering and ornamentation of movement and music in the Pallavi. A musical composition in a particular rag is visually interpreted with slow and subtle movements in first, building up gradually into complex patterns of movement and rhythm. <laughs> Thank you. 
सने सदा पग मरे सरे गमने रा पग मरे सनी रे सनी रे Thank you. 